everyone welcome back to unicorn dust design today i wanted to show you some like beautiful fall-esque maybe halloween diys they are so gorgeous uh they're fairly easy to do i think and if you guys are feeling like you're in the fall spirit or halloween spirit then stick around let's go ahead and get started we're gonna start off this video using these beautiful prints you guys I get these from Angel and she has an Etsy shop, The Whimsy Curio. She's actually here on YouTube and she designs these beautiful printable images and she not only has seasonal ones, she has everyday ones that you can purchase too. I've probably already added 15 to the cart because she is giving us a 20% off coupon to use on her Etsy page. I'm going to drop the link for her Etsy and that coupon code in the description box for you guys. Take advantage of it. 20% off is a good amount and I cannot wait to show you what I do with these. So I am taking frames and for any of you that have uh, been with me for a while, frames are my number one thing I love to, to flip. I think they are so beautiful. There's so many different ways you can like play around with them. So I'm going to show you how I turn these into like super upscale frames with these upscale prints. So the first one, after deciding what picture is going to go where, I'm going to take this resin mold. This comes from the conservatory um, label mold, which I do have in stock. I am using JB Weld. It stinks y'all, but at least I know this is like never coming off this frame if it drops. So I'm going to stick that on. I'm going to set it to the side and let that cure. I am going to take, and I wanted to show you guys real quick. We are going to use black velvet, but I wanted to show you the difference. Little black dress is on, in my right hand, black velvet's in the left. You could see how black velvet had more of a charcoal fill versus like a true black fill. I'm going to take my chippy brush and we are going to use the uh, black velvet and we are going to do one coat. I like using chippy brushes when doing a detailed piece like this because I feel like all of those little bristles in a chippy brush really can get down into those nooks and crannies. Once I'm done with that one, I'm going to move on to the second frame and we're going to do the same exact color. So the bases of both of our frames are going to be the same, but we're going to do different techniques on the two of them. So I'm going to set that one to the side. That one only needed one coat as well. And now with this one, I am going to use Sandy Blonde and this little like pouncing sponge. While the paint is still wet, I am dabbing that on to my frame. I want this to look almost kind of like the frame is like decaying from the bottom and like working its way up. Um, I wanted it to look, I don't know. Yeah, I guess like it's decaying, like it's like getting old. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to work up the side of the frame, which I'll show you here in just a second. And just having that paint be wet, the black velvet, this just allows you to get like a softer color where it doesn't look so harsh, like you just like stuck that color on top. I'm also going to do the mold as well. After I'm done with that, I'm going to take, um, oh, I wanted to show you guys this, you guys. My friend Kendra got me this like silicone mat and it is the best thing ever. It easily wipes off anything. I mean, the DIY paints are clay-based, so they wipe off with water anyways, but either way, this thing is amazing. I've bought several other ones since she sent me this for when doing like my resin or doing things on top of like my uh, nice shipping table. And I do have this in my Amazon store link. So check it out because they aren't expensive and they're huge. Okay. I'm going to take my stamp mount and I'm going to actually cut one of them down. These are less than $3. And, um, I've been wanting to do this for a while cause we work with smaller stamps sometimes and it's hard <laughs> to use that big old thing, uh, for these smaller stamps. So I'm going to use that one and kind of cut it down to different sizes. I'm going to take the apothecary stamp. I do have, I think like four of these in stock right now. And you guys, um, anything that's out of stock, I am going to wait until I order the Christmas release from IOD. I do not know when that is going to be released. I'm sorry, you guys, but I'm going to wait till then. That way I don't have to pay shipping twice. So just bear with me 
it will all get restocked at the same time that I purchase Christmas stuff. So I tried to spell out Binks for the cat's name. I wanted to put it in the middle of this label. I put metallic gold paint on the stamp. However, it did not work out at all. Um, it was too spaced out. I think if I would have done the stamps one at a time, it would have fit on there, but it, it just, it did not work for me. And, uh, I couldn't wipe it off because it was not the clay based paint. So I decided I'm just going to paint the entire middle of this, that gold metallic color. And it, it actually doesn't look bad. So it almost looks like a jewel or something, you know? Now I'm going to take a small detailed brush and I'm going to take that same gold metallic paint. You could also use your gold wax, whatever you have. And I am going to brush that on the top of all of the details in this frame going all the way around. And my tip for you when doing something like this so you don't get it on the rest of the frame is dipping your brush into that paint and then dabbing the excess of it off on a paper towel, kind of like dry brushing. That way you're not oversaturating the area and you're gonna be less likely to touch, you know, other parts of the frame with it. So I'm gonna finish this. I also put it uh, dusted on the mold as well. And then we're gonna move on to this frame. I'm gonna use Summer Crush. You guys, I'm out of this color. I'm so sorry. Um, I will get it back in soon. And I am dipping it into the paint. And then I, I literally, guys, when I say that I wipe most of it off, I really do wipe most of it off. It's dry brushing. And then you just brush whatever remnant is on that paintbrush onto the frame. And this looks so cool. It seriously looks like it's starting to rust, almost like it was like a tin or metal frame or something. This color is amazing for this like look. Oh, you guys, when you see the photos popped in, okay. So I'm gonna pop this in and I didn't show you guys, but I did clear these both with clear wax by DIY and look at how gorga this is. Not only is the, the image epic and I love it, but the paint on here is everything. I am loving it. Like I said, it almost looks like it's starting to rust. It ties in with this beautiful photo. And then our kitty cat over here. Oh my word, you guys. I, I have been selling my DIYs on my whatnot lately, but... I decorate for Halloween in my bookshelves and I don't know if I'm going to be willing to give up these uh, picture frames because I just love them so much and they're going to look so good with brass. Oh my gosh. Tell me what you guys think about these. All right. This next one is inspired by 34 decor. I shouldn't say inspired because I literally did exactly what she did. Usually I kind of make it my own and put a twist on it, but not this time. I'm going to leave her link down in the description box for you guys. I am using random cuts of wood, like random. You guys, I did not measure these. They were just sitting on the workbench. So I'm going to keep with using black velvet for these, and I'm going to paint the front, the back, and the sides. These are going to be considered shelf sitters. So you want to make sure that you are painting the backs of them as well, because they will show. I'm going to grab the F ephemeral you guys did you hear me i got it stamp from iod and i am going to be using the um white mixing ink from iod so you guys if you grab that if you order anything make sure to grab the three pack of the empty ink bottles this way you can start mixing your own colors I tell you, it is so much fun and I have all the colors like red, there's green, there's like a bright blue, a dark blue, a uh, gray, yeah. So anyways, I stamp it, I ink it up with the white mixing ink and then I'm going to press it down with my hand as I'm holding it with one hand and then we're gonna lift off, lift off. There we go, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. This is gonna be like a like most used stamp besides my texture stamp for sure. So again, 
I'm gonna do the same thing on the second piece of wood. I don't know if she used white paint or the white ink. Uh, white paint will give you um, a brighter finish. So we're gonna go into the gilded transfer, you guys. And the more I looked at her inspiration, she only used like bits and pieces. I ended up using a whole sheet on it, but you know, it's all right. This is how I made it my own. And to be completely honest, these are like using regular transfers, in my opinion. I do the same steps that I usually do where I am pulling up on the sheet as I'm pressing down with the little plastic stick they come with. And um, you can even use, once you're done with this, that the sheet, you know, the carrier sheet, you can use that again, which is really cool. So you're kind of getting like double the value out of this um, booklet here. So I'm gonna continue to do that all the way down and I'm gonna show you as I'm peeling it up, you guys, how gorgeous this gold is. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I kind of rub it down. Um, you can't really like burnish it because obviously you don't have that carrier sheet anymore, but I'm gonna put that carrier sheet back on here so I can use that for something else. I've seen people using these on um, amber bottles. So now I'm on the hunt, you guys. I am on the hunt. Um, I'm gonna use the pumpkin from the Hello Pumpkin Mold. Um, unfortunately, it is a retired mold. I do sell the resin pieces of the pumpkins on my website. I'm gonna dip into Summer Crush once again. And basically I'm gonna paint the entire pumpkin, even the leaves, because the leaves were so detailed I was having a hard time staying, staying in my lines. So I painted everything. Then as that one is drying, I'm going to take one of the sunflower molds and I'm going, I painted it with queen bee and then I'm going to paint the middle with um, chocolate, layered chocolate. And after that one dries, we are going to go back into, I think the pumpkin, hold on. What's coming next, you guys? I don't know. Oh, then I take what was left on my brush and I start kind of outlining the petals on this sunflower. So instead of using wax or something like that, I was just trying something different and new and I really like how it turned out. All right, for the leaves on the pumpkin, I am going to use Fancy Farm Girl and it turned out so pretty. I love this green. I'm also gonna use this green on the stem I'm going to use for the sunflower, which I'm gonna have to make out of clay um, because I wanted to be able to set the sunflower on there. So you'll see right here, I have the clay piece for the stem. I put tight bond quick and thick on there, and I'm going to lay that down on my wood sign, maybe any day now, after I drop it, of course. There we go. And I wanted to use the clay versus the resin stem. So that way I could get that sunflower and I could kind of like push it in to the clay so it didn't look disconnected. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? Because if I would have just kind of butted up the resin stem, it just wouldn't have looked like a connected piece. You would have seen that separation. And then and then there's this guy, you, you guys, he has an entire house he could lay in and he chooses to lay under the desk. I am pretty tall, like there isn't a lot of room, but you know what, he was soft and cozy. So I just decided he would he would warm my feet. So taking the tight bond again, we're gonna attach the pumpkin to the bottom left. I kinda, for this one, I was like, I'm digging all of this gilded look. So I'm gonna put this pumpkin to the left. Um, our Inspiration 34 Decor, she uses all different sizes. She cuts like houses, um, she double stacks them. So definitely check out hers. And then I'm gonna take Liquid Patina. So for those of you that are new, Liquid Patina is a decoupage medium, but it is also a clear coat. And Liquid Patina is gonna give you a matte finish versus Big Top, which is going to give you just a little bit of a sheen. I prefer the matte look, so that's why I have been using liquid patina a lot. It does not take away from that gilded transfer whatsoever, which you will see in the reveal photo. I decided to put dark wax on my pumpkin because I felt like the details of the pumpkin weren't really coming out. And so I thought, you know what, we'll add that dark wax. That way, see how it just sets? 
in all of the creases in there and it just makes it look way more defined. So here is how they turned out. Aren't they gorgeous? You could see how that liquid patina did not dull down that gilded transfer whatsoever. I absolutely love these. Make sure to check out 34 Decor's link down in my description box for more fall inspiration. And these I will be selling on my whatnot show this coming Thursday. I will not keep these because I do have a lot of scrap wood and I can make a lot more of these. Now this one, you guys, I was debating, not even putting this in here, but I was like, somebody might get a kick out of it and think it's fun. So I'm gonna take one of these little skinny wood spindles and I'm gonna take twine and I'm gonna wrap this around my hand over and over and over and over and over and over again. You want it super thick. So I had seen something on Pinterest and it was like these little witches brooms and it almost looked like a uh, twine, but like tassel form. And I found it on Amazon. There was one left. I ordered it. It never came, of course. And then when I went to go back to the link, they didn't have any more. So I was like, now I want to make this. So how? So this is how I decided to do it. So after you create your, I'll say quote unquote tassel, you're gonna split it in the middle and you're gonna hold that on there. Well, no, we're gonna put some hot glue in there first. So put some hot glue in the middle. Obviously, all of that twine isn't in that glue. I was just needing it to attach to the spindle so that I could hold it in place. Then I'm gonna take more twine and we are going to hot glue a piece of it to the top over here. So it seriously looks like we're making a tassel here, except we're attaching it to the spindle. We're gonna wrap this around and around. This is gonna catch all of that twine on the sides, which did not catch into the glue. And then we are going to tack that off in the back with some more hot glue. And uh, I want you guys to watch me do this over and over again. So these are fun. You guys could use wooden dowels as well if you don't have spindles. And then I'm gonna cut the um the twine at the bottom i'm gonna fluff it on out and then we created a little witch's broom <laughs> so tell me what you guys think i think these would be great for bowl fillers at like a booth or a craft fair um also just for your decor you'll see um how i use it right here and even like this i think it's cute and like i said if you don't have a spindle you could use a wood dowel Ooh, you could even use like an old like silverware, like a spoon or a fork or a butter knife. Oh, that would be cute too, you guys. You guys, I hope these inspired you. I hope they got you excited to decorate and create for the fall season. I appreciate you all choosing to spend your time with me and I will see you back here soon. You guys, I'm totally in my pajamas. This is Saturday morning, right here. Totally in my pajamas totally woke up with my hair like this and then I put my glasses on so you guys don't really see how how uh bad my eyes look with the bags under it you know it's like real life two month old life right now where everything's getting spit up on and uh but you know what I'm taking it in strides <laughs> I'm enjoying this life <laughs> let me know how you guys are doing down in the comments let me know if you guys are enjoying the content i always love reading your guys's comments and um i can't wait to bring you guys more fall i had this one i got the wood arch blanks you guys from iod and i have been dying to diy one but like everything in my mind is like you guys know me i'm extra so it's like extreme you know where I'm like I need time 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 where I just sit down and not interrupted to create what I want to create but maybe I just need to like make it a little bit more simple so that I can uh use one of the wood arched blanks if you guys haven't seen them head to my website because they are so cute all right you guys I'm gonna let you go let me know if you like this DIY if you're gonna try any of these DIYs and make sure to head over to Angel's Etsy account and scoop up those prints while they are 20% off. Like I said in the video, I already have several to my cart because I, don't, I actually don't have any frames right here. 
I bought like a bunch of eight by 10 frames at the thrift store and I'm going to sell them, but it would be nice to be able to put like a print in them so people can see like the possibility of what they look like, you know? And I also want to try the Mod Podge hack, making it look like an oil painting. Um, so yeah. All right, you guys have a good one. Bye.